questions don't allow people to be in your life and you don't really know if they are suitors or they are crush or their boyfriend or their fiance or their husband to be you just don't know and some people call it complicated what is complicated you are rather complicating your life From my own personal life and the mentorship of many other people who are in their 20s, I've come to know that one of the age period where people really struggle, where there is a lot of distraction, where you can easily waste time, is the 20th. The 20s is a very fun but very dangerous stage. And for me, I have gone through the hassle. I'm not yet in my 30s, but at least I've had some experiences and that is why God made me start this mentorship um, in, with people within that age bracket trying to enlighten them on some things that they need to know that can easily speed up their life because I realized that when I was setting information within that time it really fastened the way I do things and the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 verse 18 that because he has been tempted in that way, he's able to help those who are being tempted, talking of Jesus Christ. And so today I made this video purposely for people in their 20s. There were lots of things that really distract us, a lot of things that really waste our time. And because I don't want this video to be long, I'll just focus on one part of it and then in subsequent videos, maybe I might focus on some other parts. So one of the category of the things that really waste our time is relationship trust me relationship is like i don't know for me i think it's the center of our life <laughs> you can't really do without it if it's not a romantic relationship it's an acquaintance it's like a work colleague schoolmates all of those we have relationship or we can't just do without it we can't do without people and so it's important that we are able to navigate through this so that this beautiful thing will not also waste our time. So I'm talking about romantic relationship to be specific in this particular video. So what did I learn within that 20, especially early 20, early 20 period when, I mean, there were lots of advances and I don't know, maybe now there are more advances than early, but, <laughs> but that time that you are easy to waste time, what did I learn? Let's get right into this video. Before I start listing the wisdom or I mean the wise nuggets I learned within that period that saved my time, that saved my life and that made me come out of this whole 20 or 80 20 mess without any browsers, no pain, no heartbreak, like so whole. I want to first give a shout out to God because had it not been him, I don't know how I would have navigated. So thank you, Daddy. Okay, now that's number one. If you can really navigate through this 20th age of 20s and all the things that is in it, because I think it's very sensitive because at that time there is less experiences, there is less knowledge, there is less wisdom, there is less money. I mean, everything is less because you are now growing. And so I, I mean, I meet a lot of my friends who are in their thirties and in their forties, and now they are like, oh, no, no one's. Um, how do I even put it? Now they are like. They don't care whatever anyone thinks, you know, because they've gotten, they've passed through their experiences and they've gotten to a place where they don't really care. But in their, in your twenties, you are much more um, prone to caring about people's opinion, caring about who likes you, caring about who doesn't like you, and all of that. And that is where our problem lies. So, my nugget number one that I learned is first to know who you are and know whom you belong to. I know this may sound like a cliche because you always hear it every every now and then but tell you what it is the most important thing you have to know if ever you have to know anything know who you are and who you belong to 
sorry, know who you are and who you belong to. Let me tell you a story. My very first relationship, which wasn't like a proper, proper defined relationship, like that relationship that after SHS, I mean, someone likes you, like the person back, and then you start relationship. But actually, the person made the intentions clear, so like semi proper relationship. <laughs> so that very relationship, it was with someone outside of my faith. The person wasn't a Christian. And the person was a very fantastic person, loved me so much, and I was I tried as much as possible to also be a fantastic um, woman or a fantastic partner. So the family, the entire family came to like me, but I realized that I cannot marry someone out outside of my faith. I mean, after listening to some um, sermons and some relationship seminars and all of that so from that time i got to know i started to plan my break up or escape from that relationship and it took like two years or more before he could finally let me go because like it was a whole family thing an entire family thing and it was so difficult so I realized that I did not know all of these things before I got myself into it. And although this person, I mean, I would say loved me, I knew that because we are not of the same faith, a lot of things will happen that, I mean, in the future, you may think that I started with love, but it is not really love, you know. We were not equally yoked. We were not both people who believe in the same thing. For me, the Bible is my constitution, and for him, it's a different thing. So I had to just let go of it with no regrets whatsoever. Even as and so now, I just know that I made the very the best um the best decision I ever made. I believe that because Joseph in the Bible. I mean, the the son of Jacob. Also, because of the dreams that he was having, he knew his future. He knew that he's not going to be any normal person. So he was very prudent in his decision. And I am not surprised that when um, the, the wife of Potiphar tried to have sex with him, the guy had to just flee and leave his coat, you know. If you know who you are and you know the, the, that snippets or the, the clips that God is showing you about your future, you tend to live today with tomorrow in mind. So you don't do certain things. Just this week, I was asking my friend, why do people dress half naked and then at the end of their life, getting to their 50s and their 60s, they dress really well. And he was saying that, oh, because they have different perspectives of our life and, I mean, lots more wisdom and all of that. And I'm like, so why can't we start having that perspective now and build that wisdom in our life now so that we can live like we want our future to be? Because trust me, if you want to be the first lady of a country, you wouldn't dress anyhow because you have an agenda, a goal. So you dress like the first lady you want to be, well covered. Because I've not seen first ladies wearing crocs on the streets. Sorry to people who love it, it's comfortable. But I have not seen it. I've not seen first ladies wearing tattered or crazy jeans on the streets. They may wear it in their home, but they don't bring it on the street. That is the kind of brand they want to create. So you have to be prudent. Prudence means that you act today with the future in mind. So know who you are. Know whom you belong to. Because whom you belong to have specific criteria they want you to follow. Faith is, in one word, obedience. He wants you to obey certain things. And so if you know that kind of person you belong to and that list of instructions you have to follow, you will know who you can work with. Can two work together unless they agree? My nugget number two. The second thing I think that I did right 
within that period of time in terms of relationship is that I ask the right questions. There is no one who comes into my life that I don't ask the right questions or I don't ask questions. So I think that people in their 20s should ask questions regarding relationships. If someone keeps calling you every day, every single day, and then the person is not really defining why he's calling you. The person is showing advances. I mean, you you just know, you know we have intuition, but we just ignore it. The person is always around you, always wants to be with you, always calling you. Ask the person why are you calling me every day? Because you don't call your mother every day. You don't call your sisters every day. Even if the person says you are my friend, you don't call all your friends every day. Let's be frank. Not all your friends you call every day. So why are you calling me in particular every single day? Ask that question. Don't allow people to be in your life and you don't really know if they are suitors or they are crush or they are boyfriend or they are fiancé or they are husband to be. You just don't know. And some people call it complicated. What is complicated? You are rather complicating your life. Ask the right questions. Even if you started dating or you know, the person has made their intentions clear and you have start, you started to date, still ask the right questions. Where is this leading us to? When are we when will we settle down? You know, ask the right questions. If you don't ask questions, people will just be in your life and they'll be out of your life with no excuses. They'll just come and go, come and go, because you are not asking the right questions. And that leads me to the third point. I don't want to make this video too long, so I'll just leave it at the third point. And that leads me to the third point, which is create boundaries. This is one thing that made me cry some point in time, but I still don't regret it. I still don't regret it. Create boundaries. Whatever platform I get, I tell people that the boundaries you create or the level of your boundary in your relationship will, will influence your, your level of heartbreak or hurt or pain when you come out of that relationship or when you break out of that relationship. So when you are just holding hands in your relationship, your level of breakup is different or your head after breakup is different. When you are hugging, your head is different. When you are kissing, your head is different. When you are having sex, your head is different. And that's why people say that um, this person wasted my time or this person has, has given me broken heart. What is broken heart? Sometimes we think that it's because they invested in, in the relationship. Maybe they, they bought this, they paid rent, they did that. Not, not really, honestly, not really, because presently the relationship I'm in, my partner has invested so much in me, like so much in me. I have invested so much in him in terms of money. But for me, I give and I forget. Same with him. It's not like you are investing in me because you want to marry me. No. It's, it's a gift you are giving to a friend. When your money, you, we've all had our money missing before. Sometimes we lose money in investments, 5,000 cities, 2,000 cities, and we move on in life and we forget it. Why is it not the same with this one? It's, it's a gift you gave, forget it and go. But because we have invested some other things, you know, other than mere money because i mean we came to meet money we will leave it so what is money if you invest in someone because we've invested in we've given out some things that we were supposed to protect in our boundaries it hurt us so much we've given up i mean this person maybe has sex with us has seen our nakedness have the mental picture of everything and now the person has moved on to someone or to your friend and I'm thinking that if you, if in future, if you become that first lady you want to be, how would all these people be seeing you, you know? I mean, that is my personal thoughts. I'm just thinking aloud. Forgive me. <laughs> Forgive me. But I, I, what I want to say is that we have to create boundaries. If you don't create boundaries, you will always be hurt. The hurt really is not the money. No, no. 
I've lost money in investment and it doesn't really hurt me. It will hurt you at the time it happened, but now I've forgotten. But sometimes we hold on to this one five years, ten years after this, after this, you are holding on because there was something that you were supposed to protect, but you did not protect. God is so wise. God is so wise. He puts all the instructions he gave us in the Bible just for our protection, just for our guidance. And the moment we ignore it, we are just ignoring our protection. We are just, uh, how do I say, removing that covering around us. Beloved, I just hope that this three, just this three. There are lots of things that I could have talked about, but I don't want this video to be so long. So if we can just keep this three and work on it, knowing who we are and knowing whom we belong to, creating boundaries and asking the right questions, I believe that in that aspect of our 20s, especially in relationships, we'll be able to protect ourselves and prevent ourselves from being hurt because the moment we become hurt, it affects many other things. You will have to take time to heal. This heart is just one. You have to take, and you don't even trust people. You can't be very loyal to people. And that's when people start saying love is a scum. Men are scum. All of these things. Protect your heart. The Bible says that the heart of men, it's like everything flows out of it. So you have to protect it with all diligence. Protect it with all, make it a delicate part that you protect your love, your your heart, sorry. So that whatever flows out of it, it's sincere love, it's loyalty, it's faithfulness, so that you can love people more. My personal quote, people say that I want to be the best version of myself. For me, I think the best version of me is the me that can love more than I loved yesterday. And you can only love if you have a very pure heart. So let's protect those aspects of us. If you are a big sister here, if you had these experiences and you are watching this video, I want you to just share your experience in the comment section and then advise a 20, um, 20 something person, including myself. Because what I tell you, I tell myself. I'm also in my 20s, so I tell myself. Although I'll leave very soon. <laughs> but yes, looking back, I know that God has been good to me. He guided me and made me. I, I mean, it's a time that I experienced a lot of things. And I did not go there in terms of building a career and all of that. I used my time very, very wisely. I can boast of it, but I use it very, very wisely. And I'm so happy about it. So I am willing to share. So you too, if you have such experiences, you are in your 30s, your 40s. I mean, you have something to tell Dear 20s, just write a letter in the comment section. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.